Hello, my name is Kurt Schwer, and this is Research Tools Video 17. Um, I'm talking today about Emacs Query Replace, HDF5 files with bags, and XML metadata. Today, uh, this is for the UNH CCOM JHC Research Tools course, and let's get into it. So we'll start off by downloading a bag that I have on my website. You can use any one from the NOAA uh, NGDC archive or any other source of bags. So here I'm using the wget command to grab that from my web server. We'll need to uncompress it because if we do file h11 tab press enter we can see that it's compressed so b unzip 2 h11 tab press enter. Now if we do an ls-l we see that we've got an uncompressed file We'll go ahead and type file again on h11, hit tab, and we see that it's HDF5 data. So we can install the HDF5 tools on Ubuntu. So sudo apt-get install hdf5-tools. Now I believe I already have it installed. So it should tell me that nothing to do. Not a problem. Uh, if you've already got installed, it doesn't hurt to reinstall the software. So we'll start off by using a command called h5ls. So we'll do man h5ls. And this is a general listing command that pr prints out some basic information about an HDF5 file. So q h5ls h11 press tab, and we'll see what we get. If we press enter, it tells us that we've got something called bag root and something called group. Now we can do a little bit more. We can say h5ls dash dash recursive. So before we do that, we'll do man h5ls. Let's do a slash for search and we'll type recursive. And so here this group uh, zooms down into the various lists and uh, will show us down the tree a little bit more. So let's go ahead and try that. We'll do h5ls dash dash recursive h11 tab and we'll recursively list into our bag. So we have now these results right here and we can see that under our bag root we have an elevation, metadata, something called a tracking list, and uncertainty. So this gives us our basic view of the bag. Now it's best to usually start off with the metadata in a file to understand what you're going to be getting into. And so we can use h5ls to actually take a look at that metadata. So we'll say h5ls and then we'll say dash dash simple and then dash d and then we're going to give it the path to what we want to get. So I use tab to complete with a file name since it starts with a file name. Then we'll say bag underscore root. Now h5ls treats it very much like a file system inside of the bag. So then we'll say metadata. If I spell it right, metadata. There we go. And then pipe that to head because there might be a lot of stuff. Or actually better yet, let's pipe it to less to be safe the first time through. And unfortunately, it looks like we have kind of a kooky format. So it's going to do one character per line. So do a Q and let's go ahead and say head. Okay, so that looks like we've got some trouble here and we're going to work with this and see what we can do to turn it into something better. So what we can do is start building up using various commands that we know with the Unix shell to try and piece that back together. So we can say h5ls dash dash simple and now we can say dash D again. Actually, I'm going to go up and reuse that command before I go crazy. So let's do the first thing that I can think of, which is this is some header data that doesn't go with our contents of that. And we want to find all the strings that don't contain that. So what we can do is we can use the quote that's in our other ones. And we can say, give us only the lines that have quotes. So we can say E grep and then single quote then a double quote, what we're searching for, and then a single quote. So we want to protect that quote, otherwise the shell will think that's the beginning of a string. And then we'll pipe that to head. And if you notice here, 
the previous command we had the metadata and data header and this time we jump right into the contents of those files so that's better we still have a ways to go so let's see if we can improve that the next thing that I'd like to do is let's see if we can split these each line apart using the quotes as our separator so using a trick that we've used before with the cut command we in the past we've cut things apart based on tabs or commas let's cut it with the separator being the quote the double quote so what we can say is cut and then we can say dash d for delimiter and then we can specify we have to use a backslash to tell the shell we don't want to start a string so then we'll give it the double quote and then we'll say dash f and then we need to pick the field so this is going to be field one this will be field two which we do want and then this will be field three so we actually want to give it two so we'll pipe head and see what we get so there instead of having the quotes we get everything on a line we're getting better now the next thing is is that we want to actually build this up as a string at instead of one character per line so we'll say we'll use the translate command so tr now I know that the dash D says delete the character that we match and we're gonna say slash n which is the shell way of saying a new line this is common for many programming languages so that's a new line in there so we're gonna take those and we're gonna delete all the new lines now piping this to head wouldn't make a lot of sense so we're gonna pipe it to less because there's just going to be one big long line so here it is this is some gooey looking metadata not very friendly but at least it's a start and you can look through here and see various stuff you can see Alaska's in there so maybe we have some data from Alaska and we have hydrographic hiding in there so there's some words in here that definitely mean some stuff and let's go ahead and quit out of this and we'll save it to a file so instead of the less pipe at the end we're gonna say redirect with the greater than symbol so make sure you delete that vertical bar for the pipe and then we'll redirect it to a file so h1 press tab delete that dot bag and we're gonna place that with dash try one dot XML so now we've saved it to an XML file and we'd like to open that up in Emacs and we can start working with it and I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use Emacs to turn that into something more readable and we're going to go ahead and hit the button for Emacs get that started up now being that I know this is XML and I haven't explained what XML is at this point in the videos let's go ahead and open up Firefox any old web browser will do and we're going to search on XML and we're going to take a quick peek at the XML Wikipedia entry just to see what XML is about and here you can see extensible markup language is a set of rules for encoding documents it tries to be somewhat human readable and it's structured around tag blocks that have angle brackets and you can read through all of that and read about how things are defined how to validate this and go through all the details and just for the beginnings XML tends to start with a tag that looks like this by itself and there's lots of information about all the special encodings and whatnot I'll let you read that if you're interested otherwise we're gonna basically treat XML as a learn by seeing examples kind of thing so let's get rid of that and let's go in to our shell and we can now open this up in Emacs so we can say Emacs client remember this is a command to tell Emacs to go edit a file dash dash no dash wait says hey just go ahead open it up we're, we're all good so now we can say h11 press tab if we hit tab again it will give us options dash and try so there we go we'll hit enter now Emacs has a mode called nxml that is a major mode focusing on handling XML now the key thing to note here is it says invalid which is a bummer uh, it means that something's very wrong with our XML but we can at least make it look better after we do that we'll actually come up with a way to really view the XML data that's correct so if we see some of these tags it's a little hard but if we go in here and see there's these greater than less than pairs where the end of one tag so here's the end of position name 
and the, is the end of one tag, and then the beginning of the next tag. And so XML actually uses this slash to mark the end tag. So we'll see, say, on, oops, undo. Um, so we'll see that roll starts here, and then roll ends right here with that extra slash right in there. And what we can do is we can replace those two characters with something that we want to have in place. So we can do an escape less than, which is the same as meta less than, jump to the beginning of the file. And we can try our first command in Emacs, which is meta x, and then we'll do query dash, and then tab, replace. This is going to do a replacement and ask us each time. And I'm actually going to press Control G here, and I'm going to split the buffer, and I'm going to, with, with Control X2, and then I'm going to open up a test file. So we'll just do test.txt. And I'm going to show you a couple commands that are very handy that we'll use in just a second. So if I hit enter, give myself some space. If you want to try and put in a new line character inside of a command, we have to be able to do more than press enter because when we hit enter inside of the query replace command, it's going to finish up the query replace. So there's a special command called control Q. And after you hit control Q, the very next character you type is going to literally get stuck into the terminal. So if we hit, say, G, then it's put in just a G key. That's not very exciting, but if you want to do, say, control Q, and if you want to put in a tab character, I'm now going to hit tab. And now when I move left with one key, we jump back and forth over an actual tab character. Now, if you want to put in a new line, we can do control Q, and then there's a special key, control J, and that puts in an actual new line character without actually being the equivalent of pressing return. So if you ever need a new line and you don't want to be hitting the return key, which sometimes has special meaning in Emacs, you can do control Q, control J. Now, if you just use control J on its own, it's going down. Control P is previous. So control N and control J are the same thing, go down the line. Control P is up a line. So that's a nice way to be able to put in a new line. And you can also use it to put in lots of other characters. Now we're going to get rid of that. Control X is zero. And now we're going to go replace those greater than less thans with a greater than less than but with a new line in between to make life look better. So meta X query dash tab. Press enter. Now we're going to replace greater than less than. Press enter. And we can replace that with greater than, less than. We'll go back to the middle. I'll do a control Q, and then I'm going to do a control J. And that put a new line right in between the two. Now I press the enter or return key, and that will run that. And now we're in the mode where it's going to ask us on each one that it highlights. So it's highlighting it right up in here. Now if I hit the space bar, that's the equivalent of yes. So that's great. I can keep doing that. I can also press the N key and skip a bunch space. Now that's not really what we want to do. There's a, this is a big file and we just want to zoom through all of them and give it a go. So what we can do is control shift and then the underscore will do undo each of those, get back to where we were. So now you can see there's no stars down here. It hasn't been modified. I'll do meta less than. Now we're back at the beginning. Let's do the whole thing. And But before I do that, let me tell you the if you want to do a query replace and not have to type it all out, you can do option and then percent, so our meta percent on the Mac, or escape, so shift option percent, or alt on a PC keyboard typically, so percent, and we qu get query replace. If I were to hit enter right here, it would do the same exact command, and you can also scroll back through some of the things that you had in your previous commands by using the up and down arrow keys. Control G to quit out of that. And now let's go do all of them. So meta X. And actually, let me show you another way that we could do this. If we control S to search for greater than, less than, we'll find the first one. Let me go ahead and press enter. And so now we have the new text that we want. So we can press control space, 
move forward, highlight the region, do meta W to copy that. And now we have it in our cut buffer or clipboard or whatever you want to call it. So we'll do meta X replace string. Press tab when you're close enough. Press enter and it will actually remember the old command but we could just type in greater than, less than and now in my clipboard I can hit control Y because we have what we want in there. Control Y. We're ready to go. Hit enter. And now it's zipped through the entire file, all 169 lines, as you see right here. And it's done the whole replacement. So now we have a file that looks kind of like what we want. We can do control space, meta less than, highlight the whole thing. And let's do a meta x indent region. And it's going to basically use those tags. And if there's any structure in there, try to re-indent everything for us to make it more readable. Press enter. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to have to make this wider a little bit to make it easier to see. And we can now start seeing some of the structure of XML. So here is a block. And inside it has date and date type. So there's actually tags within tags. And this is the basic structure and look of XML. Although this file is kind of messed up, we can see that it still says invalid down here. And we have some very strange things like present zero A's running around. Those are sort of escape characters that we don't really want to deal with. So let's go back to our shell. Let me first save this, Control X, Control S. And we can go over here and we can also try another command to check out the XML. XML lint. Now lint is a class of programs that check out source code of various sorts. Lint has many variations for Python, for Perl, for C, where it originally came from. So we can say XML lint H11, press tab, press enter, and it will start listing through the errors of things it doesn't like. So on the line number one, right off, it says our XML de declaration is only at the start of the document, and it complains right about this percent 20 right here. So clearly something is definitely not right, but let's go ahead and do a different method to get our XML, which is going to be a lot more effective, and we won't need to do the craziness of Emacs, which was really illustrative in terms of using the meta x query replace and replace string. Those are things I use all the time in Emacs. But let's go ahead and get ourselves a nicer looking metadata file directly from a different command. Now I'm going to walk you through this and I'll show you a little extra trick, but I use echo to test out commands very often just to see what's going on with the shell. So h5 dump. Now this is just going to print out to the screen what it's planning to do. And before I do that, I'm going to put a pound there, hit enter. So that was a comment, man h5 dump, and we'll take a quick peek. So display the contents of an HDF file. It's a little weird that there's an h5 ls and an h5 dump, and that you can do some more things with both. But h5 dump actually has some different options that will help us out in this case. So I'll leave it to you to read through that manual page at your leisure. If you're feeling like you can't sleep, that's a great reading source. So you can type echo h5 dump space. Now we're going to use the dash b file option, which is going to write it out to a file for whichever section we're going to grab. And we can then do dash o for where it's going to write the output to, h11 press tab. And now we want dot XML rather than anything else, so we can uh, have a new file and leave our try one in place. And then we have the file that we're going to be reading, so h11 like that. And let's see what happens. So that's the command we're going to be getting. And I'm going to quick look up something really quick, so uh, cue some music if you've got it. So I'm looking up h5 dump to make sure I've got the right command in my other notes, and I clearly don't. So I actually need to add something real quick to what we just did. And let's go ahead and do it. So I need to tell h5 dump which part of the file we want to dump. So that's kind of important. So we can put that, uh, we'll put it right about here. So we'll say um, 
dash d bag root oops got to get the capitalization right root slash metadata but you have to spell it right so metadata and then a space so that's the basic command that we want to have run so right here so remember echo is just printing to the screen and I'm going to show you a neat little trick that I use a lot when I don't want to type as much if I were just doing this on my own. So I'm going to hit the up arrow and I'm going to delete everything back to this XML and I'm now going to use the curly braces on the shell and then I'm going to add a comma and bag and then curly braces and I'll make it a little bit wider so we can see this all on one line. And this section right here with the curly braces, this is a replacement so it's going to take this text up to the period and append an XML on it. And then the next argument is going to take this text again and append a bag on it. So this is a little shortcut for specifying lots of different things quickly. Press Enter. And so now we have a nice command that hopefully should work. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that echo. And now you can see right here that it's gone off and done something and it's told us a little bit more about this metadata field and if you look right under data type it says it's an h5t string and string size is one so what they've done in the, the uh, bag metadata standard was actually say that it's composed of a lot of strings of the length of one character and that's why we had such a weird format but now if we do an ls-l we can see that we've got our bag file from before, our metadata that we tried to write out the first time and then edit with Emacs, and a tilde backup file from Emacs, that's when you saved the file. And then here is our new metadata file that we'll work with in a second. And then we've got this strange thing here called test with pounds around it, that's Emacs's autosave file convention. So we'll go ahead and do less of h11 press tab dot xml so this is our new one that should be okay and if we look here this actually looks a lot better there's the question marks that we were expecting there aren't the weird percent characters and things look a little bit better it's still kinda hard to read without all those new lines that we would like to see but it's better and let's go ahead and hit q to get out of less and let's take a quick peek and see if we can uh, validate this so XML lint h11 press tab and then dot XML and let's see what happens alright so it just dumped the entire thing at us and let's back up and see if we can find the beginning so the behavior of XML lint is if it sees a successful parsed file with no errors that it can find it actually spits the entire file back at you so it actually liked this file and we're good so let's go ahead and say emacs client dash dash no dash wait and then we'll say h11 press tab period xml so now we're going to tell emacs to open up that file press enter and if we look down here in xml mode and it actually thinks the file's valid this is much better and so now things are looking a little bit more consistent we can do meta x replace string whoops string press tab enter and we can just use that last one that we had before by putting in the new lines press enter go to the bottom control space meta less than to jump to the beginning and now we can say meta x indent region and with that we'll have an indented file press enter control x control s to save it it still says valid over here so new lines are allowed in the XML format so it doesn't really care too much about the space in between your tags and now we have a much more readable file and we can take a peek through what's going on here and you can see some of the quirks of how people write metadata that uh, versions of Keras write out the path to the file which isn't necessarily very helpful to us as a non user of Keras in this case uh, we're just a consumer of the data coming out of Keras so hopefully they'll fix the titles of bags sometime in the near future. And you can start looking into that data, find the abstract, read about what's on the data, and start peeking through the bounding box and other useful stuff that's hiding in the XML metadata. So that's it for this time. Thanks for joining me, and please come back for more videos.